Look at that. And that. And that. And that. Well, every one of those shapes was made up by people. It's all architecture. Bill by the science guy. Brought to you by Broadside Architects. We design and build the broadest barns in the world. Guaranteed. I could bet that right now you're inside. You're inside a building. The design of buildings and the areas around them are what we call architecture. See, a building is the result of a bunch of decisions. Architects have a whole bunch of things they've got to juggle. Like, what's a building going to be used for? How are people going to come and go? And how is a building going to look? Architects start with an idea, a sketch or a model. That way, we can take a look at a building without having to go to all the trouble to actually build it. Then we work out the design details, all of the shapes on the outside, all of the shapes on the inside, so that we can make a set of plans, detailed instructions that tell us how much a building is going to cost, how it's going to look, and how it's going to work. Take a look at this. <laughs> it's our architectural demonstration team of science. And we're going to use these plans to construct a charming architectural pavilion of science. And the buildings have a base or a floor. They've got walls and a roof. In fact, a roof is probably the first thing you think of when you think of a building. I mean, a roof is what makes a building a building. But it's often the last thing we put on. Now, after we have a base or a floor, well, then we erect walls. And then we attach the roof. Sometimes the walls are used to support the weight of the roof, and sometimes other parts of the building are. Now, along with the shape of a building, architects have to figure out what materials to use, what the building will be made of. Because materials affect the strength of the building, the cost, and they also affect the building's appearance, how it looks. And that's very important because architecture affects our senses. Buildings are bigger than we are, and we go in and out of them all the time. Buildings give us a feeling. Ah. Now, the thing is, we knew exactly what this building was going to look like before we started, because we had plans. Well, thank you. And that's the science and art of architecture. I can just sit here and watch the rest of the show. Architects know that all buildings need a strong foundation. Here's an architectural experiment you can do at home. Try making a building out of pennies. Dropped one there. How high can you build on a single penny? Okay. Careful. Okay, I knew that was going to happen. Okay, so you can't build so tall with a single penny. But what happens if you make the foundation wider? Could you go a little faster, please? So it makes sense to give a building a solid foundation. Try it. Here, kitty. Should have made plans. This is a big open space. We can build a big building here. To build a building, you have to make decisions. To build a big building, like a sports stadium, a lot of architects have to make a lot of decisions.
Each person tries to figure out exactly how their part of the building will look. They try to plan every detail because they're making the instructions to build a building. They use designs in computers and sketches on paper to generate big drawings that a lot of people can look at at the same time. That way they can figure out what parts of the design are working and what parts need to be changed. Eventually, we want to see exactly what a building will look like in three dimensions. That's why architects often build a model. Now this is a working scale model. Everything is exactly the right size compared to everything else. That way we can get an idea of what it would be like to sit inside and watch a ball game, or to drive past it, or to play in there. See, it's much easier to build a model and figure out what needs to be changed than to build a real building and be stuck. It's a process. Every one of these shapes came out of people's heads. It's pretty cool. <sighs> Swung on and belted! Deep, deep to right field! He's going back, back to the wall! It is gone! Goodbye, Red Stitch Spirit! Would you believe it? They won the game! That makes my head look boxy. Oh no, you box head. I like to look boxy. Mmm, definitely <laughs> boxy. Boxy. This is a train station. It has a big clock, so you can tell if you're on time from far away. This is a courthouse. It's traditional to go up steps to get inside. Firehouses have big doors so the trucks can get in and out. The size and shape of every building depends on the answers to a lot of questions, like how much land is available to build a building on? Where is the land? In what climate? How many people are going to come and go? What sort of things are going to be put inside? And how much will it cost? See, buildings are going to be around a long time, so we want them to be useful and we want them to look good. Form follows function. Architecture! Form follows function. Form follows function. Architecture! When you look around a building like this, you see windows, walls, floors, and doors. And every one of them, every shape, is the result of a decision that an architect made. Now, architects put their decisions in something like this. It's a set of plans. And the plans are like instructions to build a building. Check this out. See, along with the structure, like these beams that hold the building up, is the infrastructure. Now, infrastructure is from old Latin words that mean the structure underneath. The plans tell us where to run these pipes for the fire sprinkler system. Fire sprinkler system. Lighting. Switches. Drain pipes. Heating and air conditioning and environmental controls. Transformers, air filters, water pumps. It's all infrastructure. Now without it, the building wouldn't work. And it's all been figured out ahead of time. It's all part of the plan. And the plans tell us Careful. where to put the walls. Uh, look out for that broom there. Ooh. Like, 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 let's say you want to plug something in. Let's say you want to watch television. We well, gotta figure out where to put the outlet. Now this kind of infrastructure is in the plans. No matter what you're going to build, you first need an idea of what you want, and then what you want it to look like. When the building has been designed, floor plans and construction plans are made so that you can build one house or many of them from the same plan. This church is hundreds of years old, and it's big. Like most of the large buildings built in its time, it's made of stone. The stone is strong, and it stands up to weather very well. But here's the thing. Stone is heavy. 
So if we build a structure with stone columns, we can't make the stone columns perfectly straight. As they get higher and higher, they start to bow or flex. One side gets squeezed together while the other side gets pulled apart, and the column won't stay up. So you can only build a building like this church so high. Now this building is very tall. That's because it's made of steel. Uh, it looks like it's made of glass, but the glass is attached to a steel framework. Now steel frameworks are much stronger than stone for how much they weigh. See, now this, this is an I-beam, because it's shaped like, like the letter I. There's a lot of I-beams in, in a steel framework like that. See, they're, they're very light. Ah, 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 ah. Look at all these buildings. Look at all the different shapes and materials. I mean, some of them have flat roofs, tilted roofs, curved roofs, straight sides, curved sides. There's brick, concrete, steel structures, glass. Well, every different shape, all the different materials, a result of decisions that humans made. The whole thing came out of somebody's head. How do architects use flat sheets of paper and flat computer screens to make pictures of great big buildings that aren't flat? Well, please consider the following. Take a look at this. It's an apple. And if we look at it straight on and draw only the lines that we can see, we get a picture that looks like this. Now, you know, there's a lot more to an apple than what we see here. We want to see what's inside. So, we take the apple and we cut it this way. Now we look at it straight on, but we're looking at the inside. And the picture looks like this. This is the inside of the apple. Now, that's not the only way we can see the inside of the apple. We could cut it this way. Now we look at the apple straight on again. Not like this, but like this. And the picture is right here. Now architects use all three of these pictures. This one is called the elevation view. It's called the elevation because it shows you how much the apple is elevated above the surface it's resting on. This one is called the section view. You've probably heard of a cross-section. Well, here it is. Architects just call it a section. And this one is called the plan view. You've probably heard of a floor plan. Well, here it is. Architects use the words elevation, section, and plan. Now, take a look at this. It's the dollhouse of science. When you look at it this way, it's the elevation view, elevation view. When we look at it this way, it's the section view, section view. And this is the plan view, plan view. So elevation, section, plan, snap. Well, thank you for joining me on is there a following? I am Dr. Kobori, art As an architect, I use both art and science ways of thinking. However, I put more focus on the science, studying earthquake resistance technology. Pagodas have stood for five or six centuries and never been damaged by earthquakes. There are concepts for earthquake resistance in the pagoda. 
パゴダが建てられている場所は地盤が屋根や5 0ルぐらいあるんですよ。A central column is stood first, and then we construct walls and a roof around it. No nails are used to construct pagodas. Pagodas have a jointed wooden construction that absorbs vibrations of earth shocks. I believe these technologies of the pagoda. Are useful in modern skyscrapers. When parallel beams are connected with triangles, it's like the beams get bigger. It's called a truss. Some of the largest roofs in the world are held up with triangular trusses. Arches can hold up roofs too. The weight of everything above the arch gets carried along its curve. Arches leave big open spaces in buildings because they don't need any columns holding them up. The weight of everything above the arch gets carried by the outside wall. A dome works just like an arch. See how this dome is a circle of arches hooked together in the middle? Now, a shape like this can support a lot of weight and leave a lot of space open underneath it. It's a roof. It's a dome. It, it's, it's science, but it's art. See how it affects the senses? I, I'm starting to feel dizzy. A geodesic dome is a sphere shape, and it's the best to use in architecture because. It has the greatest amount of volume with the least surface area, and builders like it because it takes up the least amount of material and it's the cheapest. You'll notice that throughout the geodesic dome, there's triangles, and because of that, the geodesic dome is very strong because the triangle is the strongest shape. A dome is one of the strongest architectural structures, and a geodesic dome is as close to a perfect dome as architectures can get. All the pieces support each other. So, if weight's put on the top, the base feels it as well as the rest of the structure. Architecture is science! It's cool! And now the story of the three little pigs. The first little piggy lived in a house of straw. Well, it wasn't just straw. There were straw bales coated with stucco and reinforced with steel bars. Big bad wolf huffed and he puffed to pull the straw house down. But the straw house stood firm. Undaunted, the big bad wolf pressed on. He came to the second little piggy's house, which, as you may know, was made of wood. Although it was a craftsman style home, it had been reinforced with diagonal bracing and tie downs. Even the water heater had been bolted to a load bearing structure. Using the same modus operandi, the big bad wolf huffed and he puffed, but the wooden house stood firm as well. It had been built to code. The big bad wolf went to the third little piggy's house, which was big and made of brick. The wolf took one look at that brick house and he thought to himself, This wolf's mama didn't raise no fool. The wolf didn't even try. And that brick house is still there to this day.、Oh. Join me next time for another nursery rhyme of science. Architecture isn't just about buildings, it's also about the areas around them. <clears throat> like steps. This fountain! These paving stones. See, the paving stones allow people to walk around without getting their feet muddy. Where people will gather. Hey, was that Phil Nye?
See, it's, it's way more than just designing buildings. This whole space affects our senses. So when architects design a place like this, they have to take into account how far apart the buildings are, how high they are, where to put the trees, which way the wind will blow, how it will sound. Is there going to be any car traffic through here, or is it just people? See, these are all questions that architects have to figure out, because architecture is both science and art. It doesn't just take care of our needs, it affects how we feel. day from a friend of mine and he said he needed some plans to build a building and I told him hey you're in luck because I'm an architect so I can make your plans well my friend was very happy and he said great when can you start so I said well first we have to ask a few questions is this a home or an office building or a warehouse and where you're gonna put it because we need to figure out how it's gonna fit in with the area around it and how the traffic's gonna be routed so my friend seemed to understand, and he said, yeah, it's going to take some careful planning to make this building great. What other things do we need to decide? What are we going to use to make the building with a steel or wood that we can even use bricks? And we need to decide on size and shape, because there's a visual statement that we're going to make. Got to make a statement that would look real good, and functional inside is always understood. We got to build it so it will be safe and sound. We don't want it to fall down. Well, that's our show. Thanks for watching. Do excuse me. I've got some pedestrian traffic flow plans to figure out. See ya. Produced in association with the National Science Foundation. Thought to himself, this wolf's mama didn't raise no fool. <laughs> Although he was employing a double negative. Here we go, 14, 12, here it comes. Here it is. When you walk around a building like this, you see floors, doors, windows and floors and doors. <laughs> One look at that and thought, this wolf's mama didn't raise no fool. Check this out. Both of these are built with the same type of And then there's the last sentence about uh, they leave big open spaces in the building, so all the little gets spread along because they don't even come to hold them up. Um, oh, sorry, man. Buildings have a base or a floor. Oh, boy. We start with a plan. Woo! Oh, my.